name's Dale, and welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. Drilling holes is a joy when the bit is sharp, and I want to talk about how to sharpen drill bits, especially doing it with a drill doctor. I think the drill doctor is one of the great inventions of this century. It's actually based on commercial version and scaled down for the home shop. And I got turned on these by different machinists that said, just buy one, don't question it, buy it. And that's my advice to you. But there are some idiosyncrasies that you have to work through. And once you understand those, this will probably be your favorite tool like it is mine. I've owned this one for six years and I've used it almost every day in the shop since then. That's how valuable this tool is to me. There's nothing like drilling a hole with a sharp bit every time and not even have to question it. You just know that it's sharp. So let's talk about it. This is the Drill Doctor 750X. And the 750 stands for, think of this, 0 0.750 or 3 quarters of an inch. So this one here will do up to 3 quarters of an inch, which is quite a large size. The size down from this is the 500 or half inch model, which does half inch down to 3 30 seconds like this. And it is a very simple machine to use. You have to line up your drill bit, then you get to sharpen it, and then it has a bonus of doing a split point, which is fabulous. So let's talk about setting this up. I'm going to pull bit out of the holder here. Now, if you didn't see the video on building this, you'll want to go back and take a look. I'll put a link here for it. I know Todd Hildebrandt has already made one because he sent me some photographs and he did an excellent job, especially in the stamping of the letters. So here we go. We have a 3 8 inch drill bit and what we want to do is this is going to line it up so it goes into the cutting chamber, or the grinding chamber very efficiently. What you want to do is look for this little fin, line this up loosely, tighten it down so it can still rotate a little bit and you'll insert it here. Now this is where the rubber meets the road and you have to be able to think a little bit. So this has a setup of several different teeth so you can line this up at different angles and what this allows you to do is change the relief angle on the cutter. So we've got our cutting edge, or our cutting lip, and behind it we need that angle to slope down a little bit and it has to be very controlled. Now when you set this up in the jig, that's what it helps do. Because of this helix on a drill bit, they're not all manufactured the same and the twist may be one way or the other. These notches here when you line it up allows for you to make those adjustments because of the different way drill bits have been manufactured. Now I always take mine and I go counterclockwise one notch and that seems to line me up just right. Now we have these little wire jaws back here which spring open very easily and you can see it's just going to help line up the bit and that's exactly what you want, what you want it to do. On the other end there's a depth stop that controls how deep the bit is. I personally haven't found it a very effective tool or addition to the machine. I just back it off all the way and that's what controls it for me. Now on the business end we'll call this, this is where the grinding chamber is and inside there's a diamond grinding stone which I have to say is probably one of the most effective grind ways or grinding wheels you can have because it shows very, very little wear. It lasts for a very long time and it can sharpen carbide and steel and be effective in both. Again, we're going to talk about the back rake a little bit. When this chuck goes in, it actually rocks a little bit and the rocking is controlled by a cam that's right here and you need to learn how to take advantage of that. And when you put it in, you'll want to press it up against this pin 
and just control that tension right there. Also, since we've got two edges, we need to be able to count to two over and over again, and that will keep the cutting lips the same size, so when you drill in, they're both cutting equally. So let's give this a sharpen. When sharpening, also listen to how it's cutting. If it's cutting more on one side, you know that your bit was sharpened improperly, probably by the previous owner, of course. It would, of course, never be me or you that sharpened improperly. And listen to how it sounds as you're cutting. If it sounds like you need to cut a little bit more on that side, it's okay, you can. It also doesn't matter if you turn this clockwise or counterclockwise. I usually turn it clockwise, but right now I'm doing it left-handed, so for some reason I'm turning it, actually I'm not sure which way I was turning it. I haven't seen that it really matters. I guess technically it could, it could show up a different burr, which way you grind on it. So the next feature I really like on this machine is this part right here. And this sets up for doing a split point. And a split point reduces the size of this chisel by splitting it. And what that allows it to do is cut better, cut faster. It's kind of like its own little pilot hole that it drills. And it also cuts more accurately. It doesn't wander as much. So what you do is you simply line it up. You have a mark here and a mark on the machine itself. We cut, we bring it in. Let's see, I don't know if we'll be able to see it. Rotate 180 degrees. And we have a split point in a matter of seconds, which to me is invaluable on a machine like this. This tool is also capable of doing a 135 degree angle. Why is most bits are actually 118? Well, it comes in the result of physics. If the cutter was completely flat, the bit's gonna wander. And at 118, the bit stops wandering and is controlled and stays more accurate. Now, if you wanted to go steeper, you could get it to wander even less, but what happens is it will lengthen this cutting edge or this cutting lip, causing you more friction during the cutting process. On small bits, that means you also have the potential of twisting this off. And on large bits also now, usually when they're a straight shank, like one of these half inch here, you've got enough shank to where it's not going to break off. But if you get into a bit like, well, let me come back here. If we get into a drill bit like this that has a half inch shank, but out here can do like three quarters of an inch, well, we've got a weak spot here. And I was talking to Adam Booth this weekend, and he talked about he was drilling, I can't remember, it was like a Morris Taper number four um, drill bit. It may have actually been a half inch shank, I'm not sure, but it was a three inch drill bit, which you can imagine, that's a lot of cutting lip. And he was drilling, drilling, literally twisted the drill bit right off the shank. So you do want to be concerned about friction of that cutting edge. So I just stay at 118 degrees. Well, you guys, there we go with another video. I got to say, I really like this Drill Doctor. It works quick and simple and easy. I use it almost every day. I know there's been some other people out there that have done some reviews on this and had some problems. Like one of the guy actually said he got hurt by this part where it, where it helps clamp down and line up the cutter. I don't know how you could get hurt by that. I've been using this thing for, like I said, for over six years and never have been hurt by that ever. So I don't know how that could ever happen. Now there is a blue version of this I don't particularly like. Okay. This is the one you want to go with. You want to go with this, uh, what do they call it, almond and gray color. But I would say go with the 750 because it's not that much more money and you get so much more use out of the machine. There we go. My review on the Drill Doctor. I love this thing. It's probably one of my most used tools in the shop. 
So if you like this video, please give me some thumbs up. Also, leave me your positive comments. And if you're from a unique part of the world, in your comments, just tell me where it is. I like to read that. It's just kind of fun to see what parts of the world people are watching these videos. All right, guys. Till next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm.